At the premiere screening, 241 people walked out of the theater, including Rock Hudson, who said, Will someone tell me what the hell this is about? Sir Arthur C. Clarke once said, If you understand 2001 completely, we failed. We wanted to raise far more questions than we answered. Clark later expressed some concern that the film was too hard to follow and explained things more fully in the novelization and subsequent sequels. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're bringing you some Did You Know Facts About 2001 A Space Odyssey. So, let's get started. The Eternal Struggle Between Light and Darkness The sun and the crescent moon aligned with each other in the opening shot is a symbol of Zoroastrianism an ancient Persian religion that predates Buddhism and Christianity and is based on the teachings of the prophet Zoroaster, also known as Zarathrusta. This particular alignment symbolizes the eternal struggle between light and darkness. Appropriately enough, the famous 2001 A Space Odyssey theme is from Also Sprach Zarathrusta, the symphonic poem by Richard Strauss based on a book by Friedrich Nietzsche which also contained his famous declaration, God is dead. One can assume given Stanley Kubrick's working methods that none of this was accidental. The film was shot almost entirely indoors. The film was shot almost entirely at England's Shepperton Studios and MGM British Studios. Massive sets were built for the film's locations, including a 30-ton rotating Ferris wheel set meant to portray the Discovery's gravity built by a British aircraft company called the Vickers Armstrong Engineering Group. The only on-location exterior shot of the movie was of the Moonwatcher ape smashing the animal bones with his own bone weapon, which was shot on an elevated platform near the studio so that Kubrick could get a low angle of actor Dan Richter, who played the Moonwatcher, tossing the bone into the air. The shot, which would be the first part of the film's infamous bone-to-spaceship match cut, was thought up during the shoot after Kubrick tossed a broomstick to a crew member before directing a shot. Although it's commonly believed that the famous jump cut is from the bone being tossed in the air to a ship floating in space, it is in fact not a spaceship. It's a nuclear device circling the Earth. The bone being used as the first murder weapon is thrown to the ultimate weapon. Originally, the Star Child was to detonate this device and all the other devices that were circling the Earth. Stanley Kubrick decided against the ending, as it was too similar to the end of his previous film, Dr. Strangelove, where nuclear bombs are exploded. Hanging by a Thread During production, Kubrick at first refused to let spacewalking stuntman Bill Weston wear a second cable for safety, although he was 30 feet above a hard concrete studio floor. This almost resulted in a serious accident when individual strands of Weston's solo cable broke under his weight. In another incident, Kubrick refused to let Weston punch holes in the back of his space helmet, which meant the stuntman was perpetually on the verge of blacking out from carbon dioxide poisoning as he engaged in complicated maneuvers while hanging high above the camera. When he actually did pass out, Weston, who'd been a mercenary in South Africa, took a minute to recover, and then set off to find the director and teach him a lesson. But Kubrick had fled the scene, causing production to grind to a halt for several days. Kubrick got some help from NASA. Even though the story he was telling was science fiction, Kubrick wanted a lot of collaboration in basing the film in science fact. To work as technical consultants on the film, Kubrick hired German-born designer Henry Lang, who previously worked at NASA as head of its Future Projects section, and Frederick Ordway, NASA's former chief of space information systems, who had helped develop the Saturn V rocket. On his collaboration with the director, Ordway said, Kubrick wanted to make certain that every special effects shot would be completely convincing, yielding a realism never before accomplished in motion pictures. Alien Contact after the U.S. Mariner 4 robotic probe began sending photos to Earth of the surface of Mars, Kubrick became more paranoid that he'd put all this work into getting as close to reality with the concept of extraterrestrial life as he possibly could, and then aliens would be discovered just before his expensive sci-fi movie was finished. In order to literally ensure his movie wouldn't become obsolete, Kubrick attempted to take out an insurance policy at Lloyd's of London. Lloyd's refused this offer. The Monolith 
The film's iconic monolith was actually comprised of wood and a special graphite mixed black paint in order to get an extremely smooth sheen on the outside surface. Apollo 8 crew members Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders saw 2001 before their historic Christmas Eve 1968 orbit of the moon. They later told author Arthur C. Clarke they were tempted to jokingly radio back the discovery of a large black monolith. Kubrick always resisted explaining the plot of 2001, especially the meaning of the godlike black monolith. But he came close to giving the game away in a 1968 interview with Clyde Gilmore, then the movie critic for the Toronto Telegram. He told Gilmore the monoliths were artifacts devised by creatures of pure intelligence with unimaginable power. The Floating Pen Stanley Kubrick worked for several months with effects technicians to come up with a convincing effect for the floating pen in the shuttle sequence. After trying many different techniques without success, Kubrick decided to simply use a pen that was adhered using newly invented double-sided tape to a sheet of glass and suspended in front of the camera. In fact, the shuttle attendant can be seen to pull the pen off the glass when she takes hold of it. The Conspiracy this was the last movie made about men on the moon before Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked there in real life. More than 50 years later, there are still conspiracy theorists who insist that this is not a coincidence, claiming that all footage of Armstrong's voyage was a hoax film directed by Stanley Kubrick, using leftover scenes and props from this movie. It was the main plot of the later mockumentary Operation Loon, Dark Side of the Moon, made in 2002. Hail 9000 Discovery 1's supposedly infallible Hail 9000 computer turns homicidal after botching a maintenance diagnosis for a telecommunications antenna. But the cocky Hal screws up even earlier when he's playing chess with astronaut Frank Poole. He claims checkmate will occur in two moves. It would actually take three. Clark gives an explanation of the ill effects of Hale being ordered to lie in computer terms as well as psychological terms stating Hale is caught in a Mobius feedback loop. While Hale was under orders to deny the true mission with the crew, he was programmed at a deep level to be completely accurate and infallible. This conflict between two key directives led him to taking any measures to prevent Bowman and Poole finding out about this deception. The deep space showdown scene between astronaut Bowman and Hale 9000, when the computer refuses to acknowledge the command, open the pod bay doors, Hale, Open the pod bay doors, Hal. Was rigorously checked for scientific accuracy. Kubrick's team verified that it would be possible for humans to survive in space without a helmet for a few seconds, as long as they held their breath, as Bowman does. Hal's name, according to writer Arthur C. Clarke, is derived from heuristically programmed algorithmic computer. After the film was released, fans noticed Hal was a one-letter shift from the name IBM and there has been much speculation since then that this was a dig at the computer company, something that has been denied by both Clark and Stanley Kubrick. IBM was consulted during the making of the film, and their logo can be seen on props in the movie. Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Although it eventually became a box office hit, 2001 A Space Odyssey was not a financial success at first. MGM executives considered pulling it out of theaters early to cut their losses, but a few theater owners managed to convince them to keep showing it. The theater owners had noticed that the movie had become popular among young adults who wanted to take psychedelic drugs while watching the trippy Stargate sequence, which made the movie a blockbuster. A canny ad man capitalized on this by creating a psychedelic poster of the giant eyeball with the brilliant tagline, The Ultimate Trip. A Space Odyssey did not get on the British Film Institute's critics list of the top 10 greatest films of all time until 1992. By 2002, it ranks as the sixth most important film in history. So what other fun trivia facts do you know about A Space Odyssey? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in our next video.